Welcome back to Photoshop Basics on PSD Touch Plus. I'm Martin Perhiniak and we are going to learn what is a clipping mask in Photoshop. We already know that what is a layer mask and in the previous tutorial I showed you examples of how to create a layer mask and we are going to continue with this example where we have the girl and the wall on a separate layer and we have the forest on another layer in the background and we used a mask to hide the original background of this foreground image if I shift click on the mask thumbnail I can show you what was the original background of this image and if I shift click again we can see the new background clipping mask can be used for example with adjustment layers if you only want to use the adjustment for a particular layer and not all the layers below the adjustment layer if I want to turn the foreground into black and white I need to create a black and white adjustment layer so I go to my adjustments panel and I choose black and white but as you can see the black and white adjustment layer will turn everything into black and white not just the, the girl and the wall but it will also turn the background with the forest into black and white if I want to constrain the effect of the adjustment layer to the foreground I can alt click between the two layers so I press and hold down the alt or option key and click between the two layers create a clipping between the adjustment layer and the layer below it this is called a clipping mask so now you can see if I zoom out we've turned the foreground into black and white and we have colors in the background if you want to apply a change only to the background you don't necessarily need this clipping because that is the bottom layer so for example if I want to use a vibrance adjustment on the background I can select that background layer and then I select vibrance from the adjustments panel and as you can see there's no clipping here but still if I start to increase vibrance I will only increase the vibrance for the background I just show you I go back to vibrance 0 and then I start increasing the vibrance and I can pump up the colors for the background and because the vibrance layer is only on top of the layer 1 which is the background the forest it will only affect that but if I don't use a clipping for the black and white adjustment here on the top you can always reverse it back if you alt click again between the two layers so if I don't use the clipping you can see that the black and white adjustment still affects all the layers below it even if you have a vibrance layer it will be turned into black and white the background so you need to use the clipping between these two layers and I just want to show you quickly just a reminder that you can always use your brush tool to locally change your mask for example if I would like to see the colors on her face and on her jeans for example I can easily use the mask of the black and white adjustment and my brush tool with a black color and just simply draw over the areas where I don't want to use the effect of the adjustment if I made a mistake like here on the edge I can zoom a little bit closer change my brush color to white and then I just simply draw over it again white in this case hides the colors and black shows the colors because technically the black color hides the black and white adjustments effect it can be a bit complicated to understand this if you've never used masking before but if you practice a bit with this example I'm sure you will get used to using a clipping mask and also layer masks so again the final result is this and the great thing about masking is that it's completely non-destructive so I can always show my clients the work if, or the changes that I made for example if I want to turn off the vibrance from the background I can simply turn that layer off I can shift click on the mask on the layer with the girl to show the original background and I can also turn off the black and white adjustment to get back to the original image 
So as you can see, everything is completely non-destructive if you work with masks. And this is a really powerful tool in Photoshop. So I show you another example now, quickly, with clipping. And this is a text layer. The Dawn is a text layer. And we have that image in the background. Now, if you want to use a text for masking, then you should use clipping mask because that is the completely non-destructive way to do it. I will create a new layer first and I will fill that layer with black. Alt backspace if you have black in the foreground color. Then I will double click on the background layer's name and to turn it into a normal layer. And then I move the black layer below the image layer. Also, I will move the image on top of the type layer. So I have the image below that I have the type layer and below that I have the black background. Now, if I alt click between the image and the type layer on the layers panel, I will create a clipping between the image and the type. So what happens is that I only show the image on the type. And the great thing is that I can use my type layer and the move tool and I can move this type around. I just show you a little bit closer. So I can move the type around and I can use it for a completely non-destructive mask. And I can even use my type tool to select this type and to change it to ops, for example, or whatever I want to use for this type because this is a completely non-destructive way again by using clipping. And I hear some of you ask that what is the difference between working with clipping masks and layer masks? Actually, there's not much difference. You can do whatever you want with layer masks or just with clipping masks. But I would like to show you a comparison with these two boxes and the labels on top of them and I will show you my layers panel. You just concentrate on these two groups, layer group mask and clipping mask. We have the clipping mask on the left and if you look at my layers, I have the box and then I used clipping to show the label only on top of the box. If I alt click between the box and the clipped layers, you can see that this is the original label and if I use alt click between the two layers and the box I can clip them on top of the box so if I use my move tool you can see this label will always appear only on top of the box now this is easier than using a layer mask for this and copy the layer mask for each layer but if you want to use a layer mask, you can also put a mask on a group of layers. So as you can see here in the other one on the right, I used a layer group mask where I have that the same mask that I use for the box, not only on the box, but also on the other two layers by putting that mask for the group or onto the group itself. You can always click and drag a mask and put it on a layer. So as you can see now, I only use it for the box and not the label. If I move it for the label, I will only use it for the label, but it's difficult to see because the background is also white. I will move this mask back to the layer group. Then I will apply the mask or use the mask for all the layers inside that group. So you can achieve the same effect also with a layer mask or with clipping masks. It's up to you which one you prefer to use. I usually work with both of them. So make sure that after this tutorial you practice with them and that you understand how to use them in your designs. In our next tutorial we will also talk about masking but now I will teach you how to create a quick and precise selection and change the background of an image by using masking. Thanks a lot for your attention and see you next time.